Okay, in this movie clip part four for second week, uh, we're going to plan where the donor energy level and acceptor energy level is within a band diagram of 700,000 area. Uh, as described and drawn in this lecture note, uh, donor's energy level is quite uh, well drawn, uh, very close to the conduction band edge of silicon crystalline material. So why is that? So we need to think about how come the donor energy level is positioned very close to the conduction band edge. So as described here, here donor's ionization energy can be uh, described as E sub C minus E sub D. So here denote that E sub D indicates the donor's energy level. Just for your information, the y-axis indicates the energy of electron, okay? and here the donor energy level is here and there. So here the, the very first question is how could we have used the dotted line instead of solid line to indicate the donor's energy level? Think about it. Well, previously I mentioned, pre in the previous movie clip, I mentioned that donor, the role of donor is to modify the total number of free electrons in silicon material. How, how to modify it? By substituting the silicon atom with donor's, donor atom. Can you say that how many donor atoms are included within a silicon material? So previously, I guess uh, in the first week, we have learned that the atomic density of a silicon material, what was that? Atomic density. Of silicon material. That was a uh, five times 10 to the 22 per cubic centimeter. Then what about the doping concentration? So typical uh, range of the doping concentration is 10 to the 15 to 21. So why is that? Why doping concentration is always smaller than the atomic density of silicon? Again, the silicon material itself is a kind of playground. On top of it, you know, many people is running around. What if the number of people or the area of people packed in the playground is much denser than the playground, then what would be happened? We would say playground is now, you know, lifted up by many hands of many people. Can you guess and can you imagine this a weird situation? In other words, there is another example. I love to eat steak. So to cook steak, to grill, to barbecue the steak, what is your own recipe? Well, the typical recipe of uh, grilling steak is to, you know, to salt the steak. <coughs> Excuse me. How much salt are you going to use? Suppose that the density of proteins of the steak, five times 10 to the 22 per cubic centimeter. How many salt particles are you going to dump going to on the steak? Five times 10 to the 20 or even higher? Isn't it a steak? Are you grilling salt instead of steak? Do you know what I'm saying? So the atomic density of a silicon, five times 10 to the 22 per cubic centimeter, is the upper boundary of the doping concentration. Beyond it, we have lost the silicon material, okay? So the upper boundary of the doping concentration is limited by the atomic density of silicon, but more specifically, uh, how many, how, how much dopant atoms, how much impurities, or how, how much donors and acceptors can be can be melted into the you know solid state the silicon material. That is denoted as 
denoted as solid state solubility. Okay. Instead of liquid state solubility, we are talking about the solid state solubility. So how many donors, acceptors, you know, impurity atoms uh, can be melted into the solid state material, like a silicon material. So this solid state solubility is quite different, quite varying, depending on which donor, which acceptor atom you are going to use. Then you may guess and imagine, ah, which uh, dopant atoms uh, should be chosen in, for a semiconductor product. The higher, the better. I mean, the, the higher the sol solid state solubility is, the better it is. Why is that? We can extend out, you know, the upper limit of the total number of electrons and total number of holes because total number of electron holes will be governed by the total amount of dopant atoms. So if dopant atoms can be melted into as much as possible, then that is good news because we can have a higher upper limit, higher ceiling level. Okay. Okay. Then going back to the original topic in this slide again. So I said a donor atom can replace a silicon atom. But can we mention, can we claim that all the silicon atoms are replaced with donor atoms? Then do you think are we doping the silicon or are we replacing the silicon material with boron or arsenide material? What I'm talking about is the donor atom is or can be found in the silicon crystalline material here and there. Not all the silicon atoms cannot be replaced with donor atom here and there. One times boron or arsenide can be found. However, most likely silicon atom is the mainstream in this uh, silicon material. Okay, so that's the reason why we have to use dotted line instead of solid line. Why is that? This x-axis indicates a physical distance of the silicon material. So let's throw the two-dimensional bonding model again, overlapped into the energy band diagram. So along x direction, suppose that this silicon atom is replaced with the arsenide, then maybe uh, at this specific x point, x1, the arsenide can be found. To illustrate this uh, physical you know, situation, we can use a dotted line. So here arsenide, but in this specific position, no arsenide. And here, another arsenide, like that. So that is the reason why we have we, we should use a dotted line to indicate the donors and as level in Anna's band diagram. So now we figured out uh, the reason why we have to use dotted line and how the donors are scattered out uh, in the playground of silicon crystal material. And what about this guy, EC minus ED? was denoted as donor's ionization energy. So what is the role of donor? Once donor can have a stable seat within a silicon material, I have meant that the arsenide is completely uh, replaced into the silicon seat. And it's going to lose its fifth electron because at room temperature, at zero Kelvin, definitely this fifth electron cannot become free, cannot become you know free electron. So the fifth electron is still uh, bonded into the arsenide atom. So that means at zero Kelvin, this uh, arsen the number of free electron is zero. 
it, it is way smaller than the enthalpy. Okay, but at room temperature, this, this number, the number of the number of free electron will approximately equal to the donor's concentration because all the donors will be ionized. Ionized means this fifth electron will become free. In other words, from the perspective of arsenide, arsenide is going to lose its fifth electron and it is going to be positively ionized. Okay, here I mentioned positively ionized. How much energy is required to have this arsenide atom being positively charged? Maybe we need a certain amount of energy to break this bonding between fifth electron and the arsenide atom. So where does the energy to break down this uh, bond come from? Maybe from the thermal energy from outside. And how much energy is required? We can say that uh, the energy required to break down the bond, the bond here is uh, the energy to ionize this arsenide. So that is the reason here ionization energy is required. For what? Uh, originally the fifth electron, fifth electron has a certain amount of energy. This guy has a certain amount of energy. Uh, in energy band diagram, it has a, you know, this amount of energy. Again, this is the energy of electron, y-axis, right in energy band diagram. Then, uh, because of the thermal energy coming from the outside, it's going to be excited. So in conduction band, there are many empty state, right? So it's going to fill out this energy state. Then what would be happened in, uh, in this donor atom? It's going to lose this uh, uh, electron, so it's going to be ionized. So no electrons here. I mean, the, this spot. No electrons at all because it becomes free. Now this electron becomes free and it is roaming around all the silicon crystalline material. Okay. Then this donor, we can claim that this donor, this arsenide donor, has lost its fifth electron. Then it has become uh, possibly charged. So this uh, energy gap E C minus E sub D is well matched to the donor's ionization energy because once fifth electron has sit down any empty energy state in conduction band, okay, any empty state here and there, and then we can say that this electron is free. It is become you know, conductive. So EC minus ED is matched the donor's ionization energy. And going back to the general chemistry, definitely depending on the what kind of open atoms we have used, the donor's ionization has also been varied. So in the table below, you can see that in case of arsenide, is ionization energy, in other words, the EC minus ED in, in the unit of milli electron volt, it is 54 milli electron volts, in other words, 0.054 electron volt. Going back to the band diagram again here, band gap energy, remember the police call number, 1.12 electron volt. And here the ionization energy is 0.054 electron volt, you know, which is way higher than the donor's ionization energy. If we use the phosphorus instead of arsenide, the ionization energy is quite a little bit smaller than the ionization of arsenide. So that's okay, so, you know. From the compare against the band gap energy, 1.12 electron volt, this uh, ionization and that ionization energy is quite comparable. Okay, so simply we, we prefer uh, device engineer prefer to use and draw the donor's energy state to close to the conduction band edge to indicate donor's ionization energy is quite smaller compared against the band gap energy of silicon material. Okay. Then let's repeat uh, uh, this work for acceptor. You know, acceptor 
acceptor, as I told you, it is accepting free electron to, you know, complete the uh, covalent bonds with the four neighboring silicon atoms. Say that boron is here to complete the covalent bonds with the four neighboring silicon atoms because it it means it is lacking a single electron, right? So a certain, another electron comes here. Say that here. In this covalent bond, a single electron can get into this empty site. Then the empty site has moved to this covalent bond. Okay. So we can simply say that this hole is created. Okay. Then uh, to create hole, uh, the boron is now accepting the electron coming from any other, you know, electrons uh, coming from covalent bond or a free electron, whatever it is. Uh, the boron in the end can become negatively charged. So it needs a certain amount of energy to have itself, boron atom itself, to become ionized negatively. So how much energy is required? So previously, uh, no, 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 not previously. In energy band diagram, the hole, uh, the balance band is almost filled with many electrons, right? There are many energy states here, and many hole, uh, many electrons are now filled, uh, they're filling out this balance band. Um, let's see. Of course, that this electron is no, this guy. So the, the electron for covalent bond. And once this electron is would like to uh, fill out the empty state of the acceptor, I mean, the position. this position was reasonably empty because the boron has a three outermost electron, one, two, three. It doesn't have any you know kind of arm to complete the covalent bond with this silicon atom. But, uh, in the other covalent bond, the electron that is matched to this uh, electron, uh, this electron has uh, received a certain amount of energy and excited and break the covalent bond and then uh, lost this energy to get into this empty site. The empty site is matched to this dot dotted line. Okay, so this amount of uh, energy, more specifically, minimum required energy to uh, for this uh, electron in covalent bond to fill out the empty state coming from the you know, acceptor or impurity atom. Uh, this uh, very minimum energy is necessary. Uh, for what? For ionizing the boron atom or acceptor atom. Okay. So e, this uh, acceptor's ionization energy is of A minus is of B. Uh, the illustrated in energy band diagrams. So for example, the boron acceptor is ionization energy is 0.045 electron volt. Small uh, compared against the band gap energy of the Okay. So boron acceptor's energy level, donor's energy level is quite close to the band edge, right? Instead of the energy state is formed. Uh, in the mid, in the middle of energy band gap, uh, donor's energy state and acceptor's energy state is created and uh, existed near to the band gap edge. So it is easy with a very small amount of energy, ionization energy. See the how small it is, right? A uh, very small amount of energy uh, can help uh, the fifth electron to become uh, free. And here. Uh, free the empty state, uh, get into the uh, balance band with a very with a very small amount with the help of very small amount of energy except for the energy. Okay, so that's the concept how the donor acceptor energy levels are created in within a band band diagram. Okay, so that's all for the donor acceptor. So let's stop here and I'm going to record the next movie clip soon.